By the time this airs, we're about two to four weeks away roughly from voting in the next batch of filler episodes and the next movie. If you'd like to have a vote, visit my Patreon below. All patrons get a vote. <laughs> The visual representation of his ability alone is pretty cool looking and I literally just remembered that Smoker's ability is one that isn't confined to his body, so yeah, messed up there. Man, even with it happening off screen, it's legit awful to see, especially poor old Luffy, who couldn't even slightly defend from that position. <laughs> Okay, that was sick and I'll tell you why, because it pretty much ran through my own mind, as I too have a very high opinion of Zoro and his abilities right now. You best believe it. <laughs> Oda has a good habit of being able to create scenes that personally make me uncomfortable. Oddly enough, it'd likely be okay if Luffy was just laid there, but it's the being pinned element that gets me. Showing very clearly how much she cares for all three of them already via this scene. Just like when they arrive to the fake village and I wind getting a good view of everything of importance in one shot, I felt like they did the same thing here. It just all fits in perfectly. <laughs> Winning this for being pure old interesting lore, the notion that they've got a system that's kept them on the books for over 100 years is insane to me. Tells me a lot at the same time too. The first proper visual use of his ability from start to finish and I must add, nice touch to show them dodging left and right as it crashed down too. Goodness me, dude, no idea what the heck he just made was, but showing how it was done was awesome. It's probably one of the most powerful and unique abilities in the entire thing so far. Also, this amazing sequence here just had to score one too. Big fan of these moments. See, now that's great, because it builds on from win number 1791, as obviously here you can see Zoro very much believing in Luffy and his strength. You get a cheeky win for this setup, because I'm going nuts trying to figure out what's actually going on. He's got a seriously interesting way of thinking. She's more just saying that really, but in his mind he's like, yeah, but why would he let us move? He's our enemy. He's a real character. Very quickly went from, this is a bit weird, to, oh my god, that could legit be a horror movie along the veins of House of Wax. Good old horror movie that was. By the way, their personalities spill out here in such a natural way. Nami is freaking out and getting angry, while Zoro is remaining the epitome of calm and just figuring stuff out. Oh, Zoro. That's what he was thinking of when he was looking at him. Never change, dude. Never change. It's quite a mature storyline if you think about it. He knew he was hurt, but as giants, they take such pride in duels, it would have been dishonorable to him to hold back. I like that reasoning. Also similar to a win, I think, during part 10, when someone gets serious, they animate it differently. You can almost see the fire in his eyes, and naturally it's now scared this guy. Let's go! That was too sick to not get Max wins, because it didn't just look awesome that he was breaking it and getting up finally, but those effects were amazing too, reminding me of Midoriya vs Todoroki. Just like the Luffy win near the start, I just gotta give one here for making me feel like this. When you can physically make me feel sad, angry, nervous, you deserve that win, and I'm angry boys! 
あいつら、許せるか。許せねえ。You really gotta adore the main cast for giving the voice work there all way back in 2000. You know they take this stuff seriously now, but even back then, it's impressive to say the least. What an awesome chocobo! Bloody story doesn't half bait and switch it constantly. In any other anime, a giant getting up like this is gonna kick some ass, but instead he gets knocked down and restrained again. <laughs> Damn, man, that got dark all of a sudden there. He drove wax stakes through afterwards. That was nasty and is very much unexpected, but I don't hate on them leaning into that darker side. <laughs> Zoro is looking so cool over there, but the majority of the win is for Oda thinking outside the box about how it would be physically affecting them like this. They put a lot of detail into these prior fights in this quick montage, could have easily skirted it with just stills. <laughs> Zoro is literally the greatest though! You, sir, get a win for coolness in the first degree. Should be illegal to be this awesome. Can we include a shot that makes him look more awesome than he already is in this scene? Yes, of course you can! Not running on the spot like a bunch of crazy people with equally crazy looking animation! Classic Luffy style, overshooting by a solid 100 meters there! I mean, <laughs> how can I not get one for that? It'd be so dumb to not drop a win there! Feels like a good moment to acknowledge Usopp's character building this arc right there as he stands with zero hesitation because of being eager for revenge, but also inspired by the giant spirit. To be honest, I wouldn't normally give a Max Wins again. The song wasn't quite as catchy as the last for me, which I'm basically obsessed with, but that gorgeously smooth rotating shot ending gets it. Zoro is probably one of the most complete characters in all of anime, in that, as far as I can tell, he has no gimmicks or tropes that make him up. He's just a really cool dude with swords. So impressive. Vivi out here really starting to learn what makes this crew so unique. They really don't ever give up. Not on each other. I think they give each other strength too. <laughs> A good example of natural conversations I often win, how it's not the case that one starts, ends, and then another starts, very unnatural, instead they're talking still in the background. For me, this made him quite unique, actually pointing out how he's not going to finish him because he's barely hurt him at all. That stood out for me. This is what I meant before about Usopp. He's not shaking or stuttering even slightly in this fight because it means a lot to him and he's proper angry. One of the first times seeing that. Well, I must admit, I hadn't expected him to run away, but in fairness to him, he's more of a distance fighter anyway, so it does make sense. <laughs> It just made me laugh after the last two Usopp wins. Also though, that lovely rotating shot right there deserves a shout out before he fled. I'm quite surprised to see the animators go in the extra mile when making his attacks look different to normal. It's almost got a flinging motion that they've captured with the way the view pans. was sick and what made it even better is it felt like you could feel the power that had been built up by watching him swing around so many times. You knew something was getting wrecked. 
Ricky. Ashi no tonkachi mo wareta. <laughs> Luffy is great here with that statement, the way he talks, but I'm still nervous. The damn thing fell and continued to spin, so not much has actually friggin' changed. It's too much. That was actually real good, saying those words in literally the exact same way. Impressive, Snake. It's quite amazing to me, fitting in everything of importance into this one view. I mean, you can see absolutely everything that actually matters in this moment. Fantastic. I mean, how it looked. Not in terms of it being good for our heroes, but you cannot hate on that. Literally seeing the ball fly in the air, the shard breaking near Luffy, I'm shocked. Zoro points out a win here for the episode because it's now a total JoJo situation where I haven't a single damn clue how they're going to get out of this one. Like, not one idea. Odd seems stacked. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not dish out wins when the animators constantly went the extra mile with animating his wax attacks? This is like no less than the fifth time that they've done it. Also though, the Jojo type situation only grows worse as he stops Luffy's attack and pretty well too. Like it didn't seem to really hit hard against the wax at all. I'm worried boys and girls. <laughs> Easy Max wins for that right there. Firstly, I'm so impressed by the enemy's abilities for attack and defense, but also the attacks were great. Awesome damage effects where it breaks apart. Let's do it! <laughs> Those two dancing in the background. Oh, that was so good and random. You already know he's gonna have a good reason, right? But damn if it doesn't make me confused and metaphorically scratch my head when he first does stuff like this. You know what? That's such a good plot twist. Very likely caused by the young girl's so far hidden ability that I'm leaving the last win in place and giving a plot twist win here. Keep them both, that's so good! I'm giving myself a win for that. Plus the anime for being clever and keeping her hidden quite a lot till now, but I'm genuinely feeling smart. Normally I don't catch these things. To be honest, a good visual representation of him being confused with the strange tilts and angles being used, but it's good to see him fighting it slightly. You gotta admit, it's very creative for Oda to begin seriously widening the ideas behind his Devil Fruit abilities from the Logetown arc, as here's another physical ability used away from the body. Not running after Usopp on the spot! is a solid 75% of the comedy in this arc, I swear. Who has he been able to think up little jokes like this? <laughs> What's going to include that as part of the last win? But that was so good. He's randomly afraid of Usopp running after him. That deserved an extra one. Also, no tons of animation they didn't have to do. Yet another new and unique ability or... One of the few anime where people actually eat stuff and you see it being eaten. Not all the time, but her and here for sure. <laughs> Dear Lord, it's like torture fighting all these Devil Fruit users, bruh. It's so unfair as well. Four versus one with abilities, I mean. It's so agonizing as he can't quite bloody rescue them. <laughs> Ah, it's so frustrating! Easily the most intense I've found myself in... Oh man, I don't even know, maybe the last 12 months. You hear the win from me all the time, but it's worth pointing out that most modern anime don't even bother animating them through the scene. They'll just appear to run on the spot instead. Not here. 
easily could have made that a blank looking gun. Instead, it's got some intricate details on it. Okay, now obviously they'll be okay, but a huge win for the anti-anime aspect of it. They said, we got a minute left, then no one saved them in that 60 seconds. Never happens normally. That's what I like to see. He can't yet break the trance, but he's sure as hell trying with every single fiber of his being. I know he notices that on his shirt, but take a win for easily the most angry we've ever witnessed Usopp. Was quietly impressive to see, to be fair. An awesome attack, to be honest, it shocked me because obviously it's bloody fire hitting Luffy, but he needed this to wake him up in the here and now, but also to ideally avoid further attacks from her. Going all first bullet perspective right there in a very different looking shot to normal. So it was already a JoJo situation as we covered. It then got slightly more JoJo and now to be honest it's legit off the charts as Usopp is quite injured here. It's nuts. That bird is actually amazing though. That cute little chirp of like, I'm okay, broke me. Normally it's Zoro getting to look cool, then probably Sanji, so it was great to see a truly cool looking moment with Luffy like this, I cannot fib. Oh, those previous wins about everything of importance being located in one single shot, and then I totally forgot about my boy Sanji, who I only just mentioned in the last win. Ha! <laughs> that was dumb. All this talk of the creative shots and angles used to demonstrate him making use of his ability, and I totally forgot to mention how good the animation itself is on it. Nowadays, that's a CGI jobby. Side Krieg, we got an ability with as many uses as your giant gold armor had. I mean, look at this. As far as varied attacks and defenses, this is up there with the best. <laughs> Unexpected. They did a really good job here of not going overboard with the animation while still having the appearance of moving them within the fight. Usopp has figured something out, and I'm over here more confused than ever about a potential weakness to wax. Fire! I'm so smart, I've got two for two on this. <laughs> Heck yes, get out of my court. As far as bad guys go, she's pretty different as well. Spitting out this reveal all of a sudden was definitely unexpected. They only went and gave us another first person bullet shot. Such a stupidly good example of what I talk about when I say damage animation looks so awesome to me, I love it. That's. I mean, that's a weird thing to do, but at the same time, bloody genius, isn't it? <laughs> Luffy really using his head. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to make that pun because it works so well as a win. <laughs> Usopp is so brilliant. Whilst in a huge amount of pain from being sat on by 300 kilograms, he had the foresight to do this. How you can see all of the hand done animation on those fire effects, poor stuff had to do it by hand back in the day. <laughs> Nami and Vivi have gotten out of there, plus another win incoming. They both also look totally kawaii, enough said. 
必殺火薬帽子悪いな俺は嘘つきでねそれは火薬じゃなくて特製タバスコ帽子だ I'm so, so happy that Usopp got his moment in the sun to shine. He really deserves it this arc, and it must have been somewhat tough to fit him in with everything going down nicely played. <laughs> You got Zoro coming out the flames like that, fully in stance and ready to attack. That music playing, you just scored yourself two max wins. Oh, you know what you're doing here, that. Ah. And now Giant Dono has made it out of the wax and the flames. They pulled it off. A logical and clever series of events that gets everyone out of the lurch. I keep on loving it. You're good, Stana. How many? Frickin' ways can one dude's power be used? <laughs> That's where my boy excels really, that internal thing he's got. There's really something to that and it worked a treat here. I think Oda made the right choice here. Kind of difficult to have an adult attack what looks like a kid, so having Chocobo Sand do it was right. Finding out that this is what Sanji has been up to this whole time. And finally, they've added to that lore we got back in the 40 ish episodes. Mr. Zero da. Very good end to a very good episode as potentially the boss, or at least one of the strongest of the group, comes into the picture at long last. <laughs> That's the best news we could have possibly gotten. Other giant Chan is still alive too. <laughs> that giant reaction from him, pun also intended. Little long to show, but I appreciated him showing concern for Vivi and the others, but also how savvy he is here, feigning having completed Mr. Three's mission in order to hopefully back this guy off for now. Only doing what Oda does best, finishing an arc in a good way. In this case, though, making it more open ended than normal as the saga continues, which right now is more like a very long arc for a change. <laughs> Tons of animation, even for such a short moment. <laughs> Far more entertaining to see Sanji get off a powerful shot rather than have it be a little silly with him endlessly dodging or whatever. <laughs> Equally unexpected was him taking out this thing too. He just kind of did them both with relative ease and I ain't hating it. To me, this convo went down anti anime in style. Felt like he picked up something was amiss. Sanji convinced him otherwise. He bought it. Not normally how it would go down, and I do like that. It makes me really happy to see how happy Usopp is that everything turned out alright between these two in the end. Like, he's genuinely over the moon, and it warms my old heart. <laughs> At the same time though, I'm over the moon for both of them as well. It's like everything ended up resolving so nicely in the end and without any long reaching stuff going on, felt natural. <laughs> <laughs> seeing these two starting up like this again, but mostly seeing Nami like this, I cannot lie. <laughs> Speaking of things that make me smile, Luffy's reaction to stuff like this is right near the top of that list as well. 
アラバスタリトルガーデン間の直線航路でミスター3を始末しろ。Right away, finding a spark to light the fuse that is the next big event that will take part in the saga, and of course, the next arc. Adding some spice to the dish by way of an upcoming battle now. Getting our first view of what the entire island looks like from the air. If you've been hanging around on this channel for a while, you'll know that good friends hanging out, chatting and eating and drinking, especially after intense battles, is always a big relaxing win for me. <laughs> Usopp lies. True. Usopp can be a coward. Also true. But like Zoro, he really comes across as a guy living his life, rather than again being a character made up of repeatable tropes. I liked this. <laughs> just putting this out there, this seems very random, and thus I'm already giving them a win for avoiding exposition and just lightly and casually dropping this moment here, but we'll see. <laughs> His greeting here, though, and the rest of you jerks. I can't even slightly blame him, though, having seen Nami myself. I'm giving her a win just now. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Sanji absolutely settles the matter of his worth this arc by taking out those two enemies, convincing the boss they're goners, and finding them the power to leave the island now. <laughs> The hug is lovely, but do you see what I'm saying when they keep on animating stuff like this? Didn't have to, did it anyway. Oh yeah, I can't believe they remembered, or Oda did if it was in the manga originally, to include blood on his lower legs here, as we had a scene where he was gonna de-legonize himself. Nice! Tomo no Funadeda. As always, we get an amazing little goodbye here. It's always feel good as well, I find. Everyone is happy. It's so damn good, it never fails to put a smile on my face. No matter how this ends up going down, it's a plot twist for me. Whether they try to stop them leaving or try to take on the monster they mentioned for them, it's a great twist either way. <laughs> Nami has such control over the crew, everyone was trying to convince them to leave pretty much, and yet it's her just losing her temper that gets them underway. It's a very personal win, and it might sound odd, but I'd have been genuinely annoyed if the bodies were just left there untouched. But luckily they did take meat from them, no wasting it pointlessly. One awesome looking sight in every sense of the word. This tune absolutely never fails to slap, and here it really adds to the scene in a big way. They're risking their lives here for this crew against an unknown foe. And here is their foe as we're instantly reminded of the insane dangers of sailing on the Grand Line Sea. So badass though as they both yelled and charged up Viking warrior style. Good moment showing off brave Usopp even as Nami yells at him to steer the ship away. He's happy to follow the giants and Luffy's command to keep going straight. But she still catches it bless her heart. Oh my word, that is glorious, but also shocking. It's so huge, I'm shocked. It even makes them look tiny, and when it plops, freaking islands are made. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you sassy so and so, you get max wins here. Incredible. The warriors show their strength like nothing before it. Their collective shocked reactions. The scream at the end. Fantastic. <laughs> that great looking shot. Man, those 
those giants didn't half leave a lasting impact on Usopp, did they? Being shown the impact from this giant creature crashing down into the water, it's only natural it would create massive waves like this that hit even the height of these two. Firstly, it was a win-worthy moment because it looks sick, especially with them moving in tandem, but also it's the added bonus of their weapons being wrecked, never to be used against one another again. I'm so glad we actually got a flashback to what initially was the cause of their issue with one another, but it was good from a law perspective too to see such a giant crew in their massive ships. Back to back wins here, firstly it's very reminiscent of what Sanji and Zoro just went through on the island, which was a good LinkedIn callback I thought. But also it's finding out that those two giant mountains where they've been hanging out weren't mountains at all, but instead the bones left over from those two creatures. <laughs> In some strange way, it's oddly heartwarming to know that they're still there on the island doing this, but less violence now, as they're more akin to brothers now than anything else. Ah, oh, I got a bad sinking feeling about this. Can't all just be by chance we're seeing all this. My wife who is getting sick, I think. What? He's so adorable. I like to think he's a little worried for Nami here as well. Learning more of the lore of her story and the larger saga as a whole, but of course it also serves as a nice reminder after it wasn't brought up once this last arc. <laughs> Putting an obscene amount of detail into them rushing to the kitchen? I've said it before and it bears repeating, but the fact that his scar is still very much visible all this time later. <laughs> How small things like this from the arc can be used later on to push forward's character progression, in this case physical progression as he aims to become stronger. <laughs> oh god! Okay, it's unique looking clothing to say the least, matches the ship too, which also looks unique, so there's that. Oh no, she really is sick! Someone call my wife through an ambulance! All jokes aside, genuinely dislike seeing her like this. <laughs> oh, it's so damn clever! Zoro isn't there because he was by far the furthest away when everyone was called! It's so good! Grand Line I'm sure that this is not the case, purely because it seems far worse than that, but it was still a decent bit of lore that makes perfect sense given how often the weather changes. <laughs> First of all, that was genuinely funny, and it's absolutely true, as she helped out with scurvy before in her prior arc. But also this feels as though it's nicely leading into potentially the next role of the main crew being filled, that of a doctor, unless Luffy still pushes for a musician, like during the Arlong arc. <laughs> for context, he's saying the girls get the best of the best, he feeds everything else to the boys, but I liked Usopp's little slap here. <laughs> I always like these kinds of moments as for me they give a better understanding of how large this world is rather than merely appearing to launch off and arrive five minutes later at the next location. <laughs> this. <laughs> and not to be forgotten, that as well. How come the comedy is off the charts levels of greatness in this episode though? 
It's a little win, but it's good to see the important role of someone guiding the ship and keeping an eye out is still being done whilst they're all with Nami inside. A fantastic piece of lore that now beautifully explains what shocked Nami that night during the last cover story episodes with Kobe and made her lock away the newspaper. Also, as a history buff, it's always bugged me a little in anime or games or TV shows, etc., that say we got 8,000 soldiers going to war, when in reality, armies are normally huge. So, hearing these numbers is great to me. Joint win for not walking on the spot, and also how brave she is here by not wanting them to have to detour away from Arabasta when the country is in such a state. This entire scene gets a win, no punches are pulled, Nami continues to try and appear normal, Zoro didn't do a great job of guiding the ship, and everyone still wants Nami to take it easy and see a doctor. <laughs> Animating so many characters moving within the same scene like this is great! <laughs> Scenes of everyone working together like this to guide the boat suddenly will probably not ever not score a win? To me it just always looks awesome. Back to back rotating shots like it's no biggie! Weird win, but like with Nami, it's nice to see her change out of her usual clothing that she wore the entire last arc. Two wins here, first of all, I'm glad there was a bait and switch there. She didn't seem like the kind of woman to potentially let Nami die for her own goals. But also I enjoyed seeing the crew's reaction to what sounded like the last win happening, they didn't seem happy at all! Now that is brilliant, he's saying without saying it, that his opinion of her had drastically changed with him thinking she was going to let Nami down. But now he's fallen in love all over again! <laughs> Nami proving herself the greatest navigator ever by avoiding a typhoon when everything was looking clear and they were going to run directly into it. And just as in win number 1960, Vivi has again changed her clothing to match the fact it's so cold it's snowing there. Oh dear lord, that is funny to me. My sense of humor can be so silly. Also though, everyone except Luffy wrapping up to keep warm as well is a nice added bit. Well, that caught me off guard and just goes to show how anything can suddenly happen in One Piece. Rest in peace to the original voice actor for the amazing smoker. This is so damn weird. I don't even know if I should be laughing or nervous or what. Okay, that just needs max wins. That was what I call a god level plot twist, GLPT for sure. It's where I'm so shocked by what's just suddenly happening, like a massive ship coming up, you get max wins. I'm not even kidding around, that's one of the coolest things I've seen in the entire thing so far. It's so technical too, with the armor plating being tucked away and the head coming up, I'm in awe! Don't matter how you shake it, this is definitely the culmination of a most excellent plot twist. Let's go! <laughs> Stupidly 
easy max wins to dish out. Sanji got to kick, Zoro got the best looking sequence with a glorious piece of animation on his own sword fight, and then Luffy knocks him out of the ship. So damn good. <laughs> First we got insane armor from Krieg, then we got insane abilities from Mr. 3, and now we got an insane boat. What sounded very much like a threat at the start really sounded more like a plea at the end. Sudden art style change! None. I already said rest in peace, but it's worth dropping another one here for the final episode he actually voiced. They're really digging into the lore now regarding these creatures as we learn of another use other than telephones. I even liked how they did this. Rather than it coming through exactly, it's in bits and pieces. Smoker is such a cool character and really unique too. He really deserves all of this animation goodness here. See what I mean? So cool, and it's good to know they're heading in the same direction. Hype! So random. But the things he can do with his body. Damn! It feels like somehow they've upped the comedy whilst they're at sea. I haven't laughed so hard in so many times in ages, but Luffy, well no, the whole crew really are having their moments. It really is so sweet how much she's taken care of her, I swear. It's times like this you can easily see how much the crew mean to her, the journey they're on and everything else. <laughs> Again, like before with Zoro keeping watch on their direction, it's nice to see a visual representation of the things you'd really have to do at sea, like Sanji here keeping watch at night. <laughs> One of the great many things I love about One Piece is how Oda thinks to include things like this. I love Jojo, but I swear the ship would have been back to normal by the next scene. <laughs> this is funny, but at the same time it's nice because you get the idea that this is how Luffy worries about someone. If he can't make you smile, he really starts to begin to panic. The addition of making her nosy nose red due to the cold weather. Also getting a ickle bit of lore here regarding islands in the Grand Line and how their weather systems tend to work. Nice giving us this comment too, leaving the door open for some wild and wonderful different things down the road. Take one more here as it suddenly dawned on me that they dropped a hell of a lot of lore as a whole and I personally found it honestly interesting. Here he goes again, letting his imagination run wild about the notion of monsters on this new island. Needless to say, it's a completely different island to anything we've seen to date. The idea that he actually had to be told how cold it was so his mind could catch up. So good. Just thought I'd drop a quick one here for the fact that now everyone is wearing winter clothing. They can grab two max wins for the ending there. Huge ending as Vivi is seemingly shot, trying to stop Sanji from attacking. My god, that was so good. This anime is something else. Seriously. Darth Weirdo, Matthew Blancet, Mao Liao, The Element Taylor Wars, Christopher Willis, Draki, Fancy Turtle, Kepan, Mini Masher, Marquez, Orkeeper, Steelers, The Epic Commander, Birds Without a Word, Brandon Creer, Brian Bayot, Cameron, Christopher Tarasa, Commander Cyrus, Doggos for Life, Dragonstorm 35, Emmanuel Gonzalez, Aaron Winters, Guru Guru, I Am Here, Your Edvinson, Kevin Alston, Kumfreik, Carly Welp, Lisa Marie Tim, Luis Minito, Magnus, Nathan Burr, Nightly Winter, Peter Milligan, Ruby Rose, Sataka Yari, Zionx 44, Sean, The 100s, Tiger Lily Warrior, Subito, Wicked Fay, Ali 50, Brainless Ben, Cecilia, Cedric, Cloud Guard, 
Harden, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Devon, Iso, Garrett Vermish, Gibbs, Izel Caldera, Jason Davies, John John, Jafford 6263, Calnock, Kevin Nelta, Kevink 102, Knuckle Duster, Chris Madden, KY158, Carl Jones, Laxor, Maxus, Liam Gogarty, Lifty, Lionel Schultz, Marvin, Malcarius, Michael Lewis, Modivorum, Mudini, Mr. Fire Cool, Natsu Dragneel, Nick Monaco, Nick Pell, 1928, Oliver Smiley Reacts, Q Flash, Ryan Devirus, Sentimento, Storm 970, TRS, The Danish Muggle, Tricky Nicky, Willyman, 